morning, everyone. This month, we don't have any financials to review. We're in the process of uh, year-end and beginning our audit. In May, I'll bring you the uh, preliminary financial statements. In June, we'll have the final audit statements. Uh, the first item, motion, I uh, need you to approve our OSC budget impact statement. This is something I brought to you quarterly in the past year. This is uh, in compliance with OSC standards, or compliance with their regulations. OSC, Office of the State Comptroller. Uh, not, not too many changes since the last quarter I brought this to you. Basically, the column with the revisions is just adjustments we've made due to the COVID-19 impact. Do you have any questions on this statement? Yeah. Pretty standard operating procedures prior years. Any questions from the board? If not, I'm going to move for a motion um, to approve the Office of State Control Budget Impact Statement. Any motion? Robert, second? So move, move Darlene. Okay, you got beat a little bit by Luella. So uh, Luella seconded it. All in favor, aye. Thanks, Darlene. Okay, uh, moving on. Linda, uh, final capital plan fiscal year 121-22. Okay, this was reviewed last month in the board meeting. Um, EJ reviewed it with all of you. Um, we just didn't get a motion to approve from the board. Yeah. So we had that discussion last month that was an uh, interesting capital report. Um, a lot of good stuff going on. Does anybody have any questions for Linda? If not, I need a motion to approve the capital fiscal plan. Robert, second. Second, Joe. Darlene. Sure. Thanks, Darlene. Darlene second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. It's uh, our next one. It's glad to see John now. John Mayo up here for our insurance. So, uh, John, let's just light up here. Great having you back here. We missed you. And uh, you're going to talk a little bit about our liability and our auto coverage. coverage. You got okay. It. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Nice to see everybody. Does everybody have the written? Does everybody have a little written report? The good news is, for the very first time, we do have information prior to our May 1st date. Normally, we're at the last minute and do this in May. We are awaiting information for our third uh, $5 million layer of auto and general liability coverage. The very good news is for the first two layers, which are the same carriers as last year, combined our increase is one and a half percent, which is, uh, is really outstanding. The broker did a great job. I can tell you the fact everything's going up about 20 to 25 percent. It's just crazy out there. I can, I showed you where we were last year, where we are this year for both Princeton and Hudson. And I'm hoping, well, we have to have by April 30th at least the third layer. It, last year it was Lexington. This year we're, they're still working with Lexington. That's basically um, our last chance. I can tell you that even Lloyd's turned us down. Okay. So yeah. um, we're hanging in there. I think we'll come up with it. And based on this pricing, I think we're going to be approximately the same for the third layer. Unknown caller. Okay. Um, question question for John. Anybody on the, have any questions? On the liability. I have a question, but we'll approve this, but on <laughs> something else, just a general question I got on insurance. Okay. So, um, is there any questions? If not, any motion? Robert? Second? Second? Joe? Sure. All in favor? Aye. For the excess liability? Aye. Okay, now, here's my question, just, just generally. If you don't know it, just get back to me. Sure. How crazy is it getting with the cyber insurance out there? Very. <laughs> I, think, I mean, the rates are just exploding? Yeah. Because the claims are exploding. Okay. Um, 
Any plan argument? out there to how they're going to combat some of this, or just going to keep increasing the rates? Well, it, it's not only the cyber. Everything is is going up for lots of reasons. All the natural disasters. Yeah. You got to remember that all of all of this is just one big pool of money, and it's the reinsurance carriers that are driving the insurance carriers' costs, and they're being brutal, absolutely brutal. In my whole life, I've never seen Lloyd's turn down yeah. a risk. I mean, we had them for a, a couple of years. They were great. Sure. They don't like us anymore. You're yeah. surprising me, because we've never had a claim that succeeded the first two layers. That's true. It's you just everybody be jumping at that. It's free money. It's the risk they're measuring. It's the, the potential of what's going to happen. What's going to happen, and nobody yeah. knows. And it's very frustrating for me. It's frustrating for everybody. We were going to explore cyber insurance. Yeah, please. I, I talked to, to Mike on that. Yeah. So if you send me back the paperwork, we can at least find out how much it's going to cost. Good. You know, the biggest part of it is, and, and you people are all familiar with the law, it's of almost $300 a name which you're required to do <coughs> that for the reporting and buying the credit insurance. Huh. And all you got to do is take a look at your database. How many names do you have in there? Multiply it by that. The numbers are humongous. Yeah. They really are. Things were a lot simpler 20 years ago, I think. Oh, well, they yeah. were. Yeah. You know, uh, my grandchildren have told me that I'm a BBT, born before technology. It's <laughs> <laughs> fairly true, I am. Um, well, you don't have a neck problem because you walk with your head up, not looking down at your phone. That's my phone, right, <laughs> exactly. All right, so that's good okay. for workers' comp. Thanks, John. Thanks right. for being here. Okay, we passed that. Moving on here. Um, Caitlin, you're going to talk to us about the drug subsidy, our reopening services. Um, Caitlin. That's a, that's a resolution, folks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. So this resolution is for the dr retiree drug subsidy reopening services, and this will be paid for with operating funds. This request for proposal was publicly let on March 11th. We sent out five proposal packages, and an additional five packages were requested. On April 1st, we received one proposal from RDS Services. They are a national company. They have a large number of public sector clients and have performed this service with them with positive results in the past. And there is a full waiver of MWBE participation on this contract. So it is my recommendation that the board award the retiree drug subsidy services contract to RDS services for a full five year term. You may recall that I came to the board or I mentioned the board uh, last year, uh, sometime in the summer, um, that I was interested in looking into hiring a company to do this. What they do is we get a, a a rebate on uh, prescription drugs for retirees, around 250000 or so a year. What this company does is goes and reopens our claim and finds other prescription drugs that went to retirees that were not included in that rebate. For example, it could have been a, a medicine that was prescribed for them while they were in the hospital for 10 days. but the insurer wouldn't have seen that because it was in the hospital bill. So they, they claim they have the ability and, and they've had a success history of being able to reopen these for the past three years and pick apart each and every claim to make sure we're getting our rebate on every prescription that was written for a retiree. We don't have to pay them unless they find us money. They get 25%. Of whatever they find us. So if they uncover 100 grand, we get 75,000 for doing nothing. Good. Questions for Caitlin on this? It's good work. Questions for Caitlin. There's no questions. We have a motion to approve it. Robert, second. Well, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving Aye. on. Moving on with um, resolution three. Um, Caitlin's going to talk to us about the turn by turn software purchase and, of course, the maintenance agreement. That's right. 
So this is a sole source purchase through Clever Devices, and this will be paid for with operating funds. So this software will be utilizing the existing monitor to show the driver a map uh, of the route with turn-by-turn -turn directions as well as a voice assist. The total cost for the software purchase as well as the five-year maintenance agreement is $170,692. So it's my recommendation that the board award this purchase and agreement to Clever Devices. Question. Can you give a little synopsis yeah. on what it's going to do? Sure. Uh, essentially, it, it is a uh, glorified GPS system, but it's specific to our route system for all properties. So whether you're here in Syracuse, Utica, Oneida, um, Auburn, it doesn't make a difference. What it's going to allow the operator to do is a couple of things. Number one, it's going to help them learn the routes faster. Uh, obviously, it benefits our customer. The, the more likely that we are going to be on time and, and providing the service that we've agreed to provide to our customers. In addition to that, it also helps the long-term employee who may not have been to Baldwinsville in two or three years because the, the routes they've been picking don't go there. So they're not going to be afraid or apprehensive to take a piece of work that they haven't done in a long time. So it's a nice refresher as well. So really all it is doing is we're not going to change our, the way we train. We're still going to train uh, using route books and, and, and the core practices that we use to teach operators how to drive and how to drive the routes. But this is a twofold thing. A, it's going to help the new people and more. It's re a reassurance that you're going in the right direction at all times. You might have an operator that's driving in an unfamiliar area because they're or somebody called in sick and they picked up a, a run. Uh, it's going to help them with that. It's going to help with um, detours. You know, it's, we're heading into construction season and we're constantly detoured. So, <coughs> yeah, more technology to, yeah, that's where we're going. Yeah, we already provide this service on our paratransit. Yeah. So, this is just an add on to the picture. Yeah. Good, good job. Okay, um, okay. Uh, motion. Robert, second. Joe? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Let's, we're going to move into uh, now the approval for section 5339 and 5307 grant program. Who's, uh, Good morning. He jumped up to the room. <laughs> yeah, to the table. Welcome. Well, these presentations. Nice to see, you know, it's, yeah, these presentations in 3D, you know. It's nice to see people back in the room. I'm not used to this, so I don't have my A game on. I've missed yeah. all of you in All right. So, Go right ahead. This resolution is to authorize the filing for the application for these funds, 5307 and 5339. So once I get your approval, I can hit go, send this to the DOT, and we can get ready for some money. Perfect. Um, great work. Any questions on that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like. Okay. If not, a motion. We can get this moving here. Need a motion. Uh, Luella, second. Joe, all in favor? Aye. Good. All Aye. right. Very good. Thanks, Tara, Thank for your you. effort there. Appreciate no it. No problem. <laughs> Linda, any other business we want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, just a couple more things. Nothing that needs board approval. Um, the MRT statement was in your board report. Just wanted to brag a little bit about our, our mortgage tax. This was a record year for the authority, yep. ending it with $9.4 million in um, mortgage tax receipts. Last time we were this, we weren't anywhere near this high, but our record year was 2006 with only 7.8 million. So I'd like to, you know, this would be nice if we sent a copy of this to Steve Scher. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I like I was waiting for the final one. Oh, did you? I'd like, like to see his reaction, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. I can't believe it, guys. I really do. I just can't believe how much came in on that. So, you know, when we talk about that, it's good for the economy, what we're talking about here. So, money's being spent, properties, residential, commercial are being bought. So, um, Things are being refinanced, so it's it's actually it's good for the economy. Um, it's an indicator, definitely an indicator. But Linda, what else we got? Lastly, um, in your board packet, you all received a copy of our annual report. Um, this is something we're very proud of. This is really speaks to who we are and how we perform. And there was some, you know, a lot of individuals involved. It was a collaborative effort. Just wanted to give um, appreciation to the people that were involved um, for the for the strategic plan. Susanna shared. That, well, say a few things about that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Linda. Um, so I've brought the strategic plan up in the last couple of governance meetings. We've been working on this since 2018, um, kind of redeveloping and redesigning what we had in place prior. Um, through the process of that discussion, 
I believe it was Brian actually who brought up the point that we have a strategic plan and an annual financial plan and an annual report. And in the interest of kind of consolidating three different documents for review, we combined them into this one comprehensive annual report. Um, this involved quite a lot of effort on the um, part of a lot of individuals, so I would really like to thank the people who worked so hard to get this done so quickly, um, primarily uh, Melissa Brim uh, in accounting for updating the financial report section, um, and then also Casey Brown and the marketing department for getting it into this format. Uh, the original strategic plan document was a Word document that was a lot of words, um, a little dry to read at points. Um, so now in this new format, it actually is something that kind of captures your attention, um, makes you want to read it, and, and does provide some good information on what our goals and plans are for the future. I want to thank um, you, Su Susanna, for your, for your involvement on that. And, uh, and it also updates yeah. the, um, like the financial plan where before you would just see a printed balance sheet and P&L, and now you've got some narrative, some more narrative, some charts and graphs, so it's more, much more visual. You know what I like about this? It really tells, I'm looking at this one when we got it this week, it tells a story that you can actually relate to. And I, I, for some reason this year, it just um, it grabbed my attention on multiple ways um, when I was looking at this. It was very impressive, very impressive work for everybody that was involved. I know a lot of people were involved. Thank you, Susanna. Yep. Casey, thank you. Lynette Paduano was also highly involved in this. Marketing department did a lot of work. Um, did you want to say anything, Casey? Uh, you guys have done a great job acknowledging. Um, I want to just acknowledge Lynette and Steve. Uh, they were uh, the primary authors of the annual report articles. Um, and through uh, this year was a, a very different year, um, having the, the privilege of working with both accounting and Susanna. Uh, and like you said, putting together a narrative and telling a story. Um, it was. Uh, the first time in 13 years that I've been here that I've worked so closely with outside departments on putting these together and it was great and I think everybody has acknowledged and agreed that this is the path forward and you know next year it will be uh, a lot smoother and uh, you know just it's an enjoyable document to look at and read uh, the infographics you know really do tell the story and you don't have to read between the lines and the accounting files so much now it's it's there and easy to, to understand. Like the diversity and the diversity of so many um, employees here on all different levels, especially with this aggravation of a year that we had, but on some of the, the you could tell just by some of the pictures of, I think the challenges that this has already faced. Steve, any comments? It's been said already. Okay, very good. Very, um, yeah. I think it's something to be proud of. Yeah, and thank you, Melissa, for all your hard work, too. She did the, the finance piece. She did a really good job. Okay, good job, Melissa. All right. I think that's it. That's it. That's my report. Okay. Um, that approves our um, audit and finance committee. And uh, let's just take a couple, about a minute, and we'll get ready.